What's up guys? It is Thursday, uh, November 14th, 2024. We're at the Bitcoin block height of 870,346. TikTok, next block. We're back home in uh, lovely, beautiful uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. And it's a little cold here right now. It's a little chilly. Uh, there's a strip down there. I don't know if you can see it. But um, yeah, a lot of stuff going on today. Um, I'm actually a bit, I don't want to say jet lagged. I'm kind of in between, right? Right now it is uh, 8.25 p.m. Pacific time, my time. And uh, where I just came from, it's 11.25. So I feel like it's 10 o'clock. Like I'm right in between, you know what I mean? Anyways, enough about me. Let's just see if you can get a better shot of that. See if you guys can see that. There's the sphere, there's all the freaking buildings. I love coming up here because you can see basically the whole Las Vegas. The new and the old, we like to call it the new is over here and then all that old Las Vegas where uh, Sammy Davis Jr. and Frank Sinatra and Elvis Presley and all them were. I love this town, man. Love it. Love it. Anyways, um, went back to work today trying to get as, as many Satoshis as I can. And I'm, I'm so glad that Bitcoin went down <laughs> to 88,000, 87,000, 88,000, whatever. I never thought, well, I knew I, I knew I would, but if you'd have told me when we were at 58K and in that range, that in a few weeks I'd be saying, I'm glad we're down <laughs> to 87,000, I'd have thought you were crazy. Wow, what a what a run, man. What a run. Are we on a pause right now? Is this the day we pause and then shoot back up tomorrow like we did a couple of days ago? I don't know, man. I don't know. But obviously you guys heard the, the, the rumor that there's a nation state buying Bitcoin. I believe that. I believe it. Again, guys, listen. <laughs> This is the finite pie. You know what I mean? Um, I'm buying every hour on the hour using the Strike app. Uh, I had a friend of mine that I grew up with, a dear friend of mine. He um, he was asking me questions about Bitcoin. He's like, yeah, I, I got a little bit of it. I go, what you got? He goes, well, I got it on Robinhood. I got some Ethereum and all that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How much Bitcoin you got? <laughs> this is a guy I've known for since the 80s okay so we we talk about this and I, he says i got like 10 percent of a bitcoin i was like what so he showed me he's got 10 million satoshis he bought his average buy was 30 something thousand and you know he's just been buying and he hasn't bought lately but he's just like yeah you know i'm like bro <laughs> let me show you my satoshi saturday videos uh if you guys are new to this channel and you haven't seen my satoshi saturday series and you're wondering about bitcoin go ahead go on over there to satoshi saturday uh, my playlist over there and you'll learn uh, a lot more uh, than meets the eye when it comes to quote unquote Bitcoin because again Bitcoin is not a real thing it's really Satoshi's and the little units of Bitcoin and if you guys want to buy some Bitcoin and get some free Bitcoin use Bitcoin only exchanges guys okay and I got some links below so you can do that help the channel and get yourself some free uh, Satoshi's but yeah uh, right now for a dollar I believe you can get 1100 or something something like that which is a little bit more than what we were getting the last couple of days when it was 90 in the 90s. Uh, crazy, man. Uh, when we hit 100,000, guys, we're going to be getting less than 1,000 Satoshis for a dollar, and it's still going to be a steal, man. Anything under a million dollars as of now is going to be a steal. But even in the future when we're at a million, uh, when it's at, I don't know, 3 to 5% adoption or whatever it is, I don't know it's going to be. Uh, it's still going to be a steal, man. I'm, I'm just telling you that. Hardest money in the world. But well, we got a lot going on in, outside of Bitcoin. Uh, we got uh, Trump just absolutely <laughs> shaking up the world with his picks, man. I mean, I'm, I'm loving these picks. Matt Gates, Tulsi Gabbard, and today RFK Jr., uh, some of the big names that we all know. I think Tulsi Gabbard being the director. I think it's the director of national security, I believe. Excellent. Uh, Matt Gates being <laughs> the attorney general. <laughs> oh, my God. And then obviously RFK Jr. obviously being in, in charge of the of the health department. <clears throat> I forget the name of the uh, of the uh, actual job title. But will these people get certified? I don't know, man. I don't know because I don't think Tulsi Gabbard is going to play those political games. Uh, but she's not going to get any votes from the, from the Democrats. I'll just say that in the rhinos. And uh, we, we'll see. I, I I can't say that because uh, again, we're gonna we're gonna see. Uh, what's going on going on with the swamp creatures and the and the uh, and the bureaucrats and the uh, 
and the evildoers, which are all the same, <laughs> just different names for them, and the rhinos. Uh, Matt Gates in particular, uh, a lot of people don't think he's going to get certified uh, because he is a uh, he is a thorn in a lot of Republican side. I'll tell you that. And I've been watching Matt Gates ever since he's been in Congress. And let's just say uh, that guy, uh, I'm glad we got him. You got to understand something, man. People keep talking about Donald Trump um, electing people or selecting people that are loyal to him <laughs> and saying that like that's a bad thing. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you want anybody, if you owned a business or if you were married or friends, do you not want somebody that works for you to be loyal? Do you not want your friends to be loyal? Do you not want your spouse to be loyal? I mean, come on, man. This is absolutely fucking ridiculous, the shit they say about Donald Trump. It really is, man. It's just stupid. Because again, they're trying to paint him as a, oh, he's a dictator. He's just trying to... I'm loving how he's picking these people. Love it. And the more the mainstream media gets mad, the more and more I love it. And speaking of the mainstream media, let me get into them for a second. Their, uh, <laughs> their uh, uh, ratings, yeah, have been in the tank. Have you guys seen CNN and MSDNC? <clears throat> Bad. They did okay on election night. I think CNN got like 5 million views and, uh, and MSDNC got 6. But then they all went down. Obviously, the election night, the election cover is going to be high up. But then after it's going to get down into the regular stuff. But they're they're hemorrhaging, um, they're hemorrhaging uh, viewers, man, and, and, and loyalists. And why is that? I think it's a combination of things. I think combination of people being lied to, people just needing a break from uh, the election stuff. Um, I think it's also too, uh, you know, I just think people are getting tired of it. You know what I mean? And I think some of the ratings that they're getting, honestly, is from people like me who, who kind of like uh, watch just for entertainment purposes or watch so you don't have to. And there are people out here that watch them that cover what they say and, and give little clips and stuff and the and the and they gotta get the clips by watching it. And I made a decision tonight after I saw those ratings and plus how they're acting and stuff like cause because the election's over now and I only have a certain amount of time. Uh, I've decided, and I know you guys have already probably done this, but I've decided I'm not watching the mainstream media anymore. None of it. I'll watch some Fox News every once in a while. I'll watch some Newsmax. Because those guys have integrity, even though, again, Fox News is not the biggest fans of Donald Trump, but it's not all about Donald Trump. It's about America First movement. Uh, but I watch a little bit of them because I like some of the anchors there. And they do tell the truth, but again, they're not they're not the biggest fans of Trump. But I'm definitely, definitely not watching freaking CNN, the Clown News Network, the Crime News Network, the Clinton News Network, the Can't Never Tell the Truth Network or whatever. PBS, ABC, CBS, MSDNC, none of that shit. I'm not watching it anymore. Now, I've never watched The View, but I did tune into them the next day after the election. I had to, man. I had to see what they had to say. I'm definitely not watching them neither. Now, there's a there's a rumor saying about The View saying that, because uh, they got five panelists up there, the Cackling Hens, and they're talking about getting uh, switching up the uh, lineup because they need a couple of conservative um <laughs> anchors up there and Anna Navarro and the other one the pretty girl at the end uh they're there's, they're not Republicans there's definitely nothing conservative about them they're just nothing but liberal Trump deranged idiots you know what I mean <clears throat> so they're looking to get maybe a Trumper in there or another conservative or something like that again I'm not watching none of it man they lied to everybody and stuff like that and they deserve the network now the network deserves to die off and go off into the sunset where they need to, need to go because again we have so much media out here now that I'm, I'm consuming. I don't even have time to watch these people anymore because I like to watch them to report to you guys and stuff like that. But again, now that the election's over, I'm not giving them any ratings anymore. And I suggest you guys don't either if you're not doing it already. And I also, um, I also expect any Republican or conservative or America First person not to watch. And also, don't even contribute to it. Don't even go up there. Don't, don't go up there on their shows uh, because they're nothing but propagandists and all they're gonna do is argue with you anyways. So fuck them. Excuse my language. That's how I feel about it. But uh, I'm loving everything that's going on right now. Again, I feel like it's uh, quiet before the storm. Um, I'm trying to keep my guard up. And what I mean by that is Donald Trump getting into the White House. Obviously, that was a big moment. Uh, I think it was yesterday when Donald Trump sat down with Joe Biden. And I'm telling you, I told you this the other day. No one's more happier than Joe Biden. Joe Biden and Jill Biden, I don't care what anybody said. They voted for Donald Trump. They did. And, and the Democrats are blaming everything 
on everybody but Kamala Harris. Not taking any responsibility. Still woke as hell, saying that the reason why Donald Trump won because the right wing disinformation and misogyny and racism. My God, man. That woke shit that they have in that party, it's a fucking cancer, man. And because of that, I don't think they're ever going to recover. I don't know what the Democrat Party is going to do, but they have so many different factions in there, so many different pieces of it. I don't know how people, again, they voted against all that bullshit. You know what I mean? They don't. They, people don't want this shit no more. They don't want the wokeness. They don't want none of this crap. And if they keep that up with the, with the woke shit and the race hustlers and all this other bullshit, it ain't going to work, man. It ain't going to work. But going back to what I was saying about getting worried, the calm before the storm, is yes, we won the election. Yes, we're getting some people that are uh, really good in, into the, uh, you know, his his uh, cabinet, Donald Trump's cabinet. He's not in office. He's not in office yet, guys, and he still needs to stay safe. And uh, this is the skeptic in me, but I just don't see the Democrats giving up power that easy because they couldn't they couldn't cheat on the cheat in the election. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen this go around January 6, 2.0. When Jamie Raskin has already said, he already read the playbook out loud, that they're not going to certify the election. And if that happens, guys, you're talking about all hell breaking loose. But that's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about a black swan event, to be honest with you. Because, again, I was wrong on my prediction all the way up for me to a year from now, a year ago, that I said uh, I don't think there was going to be an election because I just don't see anything they could do to let Donald Trump in office. And they threw everything and the kitchen sink at him. And I was like, man, there's not going to be an election. I thought it was a black swan event. I had all this food. <laughs> I had everything, water, everything, just in case. And I still have it. And that's what I'm worried about, some kind of EMP or something, man, something. Because once he gets in that office, guys, whoo. I mean, are they going to do the Black Swan event? Or are they going to do the let's get him in and let's just stifle everything he's he's doing and pay off, you know, some of these rhino uh, swamp creatures and make sure he can't get anything done? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm, I'm, I'm hoping on the latter because, <laughs> I, you know, I don't want the – the one before that where they do the black swan event because obviously i don't want anybody to be messed up but <clears throat> it's not going to be smooth sailing you know and donald trump is the least of their concerns right now donald trump went down the list of public enemies uh number one i think right now the public enemy number one is elon musk and they know that jd vance and the rest of the america first movement is uh is the future and Donald Trump, you know, when you know that you're in only for four years, it makes a big difference. You know, usually when presidents come in, uh, they, you know, they do two terms. But if they come in as the incumbent, it, it changes everything a little bit. Because in political terms now, I'm talking about political terms, four years goes by like that. It's nothing. Because you, <laughs> you got the midterms in 2026. Next thing you know, people are going to start campaigning in 2027. It goes fast, guys. It goes fast. And he has a lot of work to do. That's why I like the fact that he's coming out. Uh, uh, iron, irons are blazing, or blazing, or whatever. Guns are blazing. Uh, picking all these uh, people that people on the left think that are crazy, and they don't like it. But I love these picks because, again, you have to go extreme to beat extreme. Because this is extreme what they have. Uh, the people that they have in office right now. You think Tulsi Gabbard or or uh, Matt Gates or RFK Jr. is more more terrible or more extreme than these idiots? Or the guy that's dressed up like a woman and. The other guy that's dressed up like a woman, a little like Matt uh, Matt Damon, with the bald head, with the big lips, stealing people's fucking luggage. Come on now. We got to get these people out of here. And while the iron is hot, Trump has to strike. And he has to make sure that, of course, you got to make backroom deals and you got to do this and put a couple extra pork <laughs> in the next bill and shit like that. You, you know how it goes. You guys are humans and they're trying to get what they can get. And Trump does have to play the political game. But at the end of the day, he only has about 100 days to get all these people in that he wants, these quote-unquote extreme people. And when the Democrats and the left-wing media are mad, <laughs> that definitely means me and you are happy. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And again, guys, listen, uh, again, Las Vegas, Nevada is a beautiful city. I absolutely love it. It's a very small city in comparison to other cities. And uh, it's a big pop. It, it's, it makes up of a big population in the uh the state of nevada because again nevada is a a very small populated city even though it's i mean state even though it's a big area uh, it's a lot of desert here and stuff like that and the reason i bring that up is because when i'm driving around and i see all this traffic here in a little small area um it makes me think like hmm how many of these people that are out here right now have uh have the hardest money in the world 
how many of them know about it? How many of them, if they do have it, are storing it right? How many of them are gonna hold on to it and not sell it because it quote unquote went up? How many, how many of them are not gonna trade it? How many of them really understand what they have? One out of a thousand, something like that? Even if there was only, even if there was 21 million just split up in this city or split up in your city, uh, that's still not a, that's not a lot to go around, man, it's not. But when you think about 21 million, not just for the city, not just for a state, not just for a country, not just for one side of the planet, for the whole planet, with less than 21 million really uh, being available, because again, there's only 19.7 that's been mined already. Uh, 21 million won't be mined until we're dead, we'll be long gone. 99% uh, of them will be mined in the year 2034. Many of them are lost. Uh, we got savages like you and me that are never going to sell. Never going to sell my Satoshis. You got people who have no idea what's going on here. So with that being said, you have a the opportunity of not a lifetime, of not a generation. You have a, I, dare I say, you have an opportunity of a species. You just do, man. I believe that. There's only going to be one time you can do this right now that you can collect it when nobody else is know, knows about it. Just like that land that uh, Michael Saylor always talked about, the digital New York City, <clears throat> when people are snatching up gold in the gold rush in California and New York City, like I said, in the 1700s. Uh, to me, this is even more valuable than that because this is, <laughs> this is money in digital currency that's for all over the world. Digital uh, Manhattan and, and, and California wasn't for the whole world, I don't believe, the, the gold rush. Only a certain amount of people are gonna get that. So with that being said, you gotta take advantage. You can get 1,100 and something of them for $1 right now. $1! That sounds crazy. Because in 10 years, it's gonna take you a lot more time and energy to get those 1,000. So since that's the case, make sure, please, Heed my words, and Lord, please let these people hear this in their souls, their hearts, and their brains, and their minds. You have to study and stack as much as you can. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> you haven't been paying attention, but here's a little hint. It's the best way to save. And for me, the only way to save. And that's Bitcoin. I love each and every one of you, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace and love, guys.